Hi, I'm John Verparian, and this is Beyond the Game. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about the R word. Federal government in action has canceled the trademark rights of the NFL's DC franchise. So here to give us the legal, historical, and economic impact, I'd like to welcome back to the show good friend Evan Weiner, who is a sports journalist as well as someone versed in the law to tell us all about it. Evan, welcome. Well, first I want to congratulate you for getting married. Oh, hey, Since that's the last what, time I'm, I was here. That, <laughs> That's correct. Since the last time you're here, yeah, I went down that aisle again. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, Thank you. I just did a story for the Daily Beast, which uh, came out. Uh, we're taping yeah. this show on uh, June 25th. So it came out today. You could look it up on the Daily Beast about the fighting Sioux of uh, North Dakota and how the NCAA in 2005 told 19 schools you have to do something about your nickname or your mascot. Um, and you have to get rid of them by 2006. Well, Florida State did a deal with the Seminole Indians, and the Seminole Indians are okay with Florida State. Um, University of North Dakota decided, well, we're not doing anything. We like the Fighting Sioux. We have one tribe who's on board. We think we have two tribes who are on board, saying, giving their okay to the nickname Fighting Sioux and also the logo, which was designed by a member of the uh, uh, Chippewa tribe of North Dakota. Um, there's some parallel there and there's some not parallel there. Um, the NCAA told the University of North Dakota it's got to go. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. The NFL, on the other hand, is still making money off of the Washington Redskins name and logo. And until the spigot dries up and the revenues going into local, not the national revenues, but the local revenues into that Washington football team dry up, there is no reason for Dan Snyder to change that name. Okay, let's just uh, go to the heart of the decision that uh, the trademark office uh, came down with. This name uh, has been around for 82 years. In fact, the Washington team is a charter uh, member of the National Football League. Why now? Uh, uh, would the, why did they cancel it? What was the legal reasoning behind it? Pro political correctness, it's a slur. <laughs> but actually well, the team started in Boston, uh, was the Boston Redskins, George Preston Marshall. Now I've gotten variations of this story. And Shelley Saltman, my friend in Los Angeles, his uncle, his uncle played, uh, I believe it was his uncle, played with the uh, Boston Redskins. And from what Shelley told me, the team was named, from what he was told, uh, after George, Preston's Mar George Preston Marshall's friend, who was a Amer Native American, or as I learned this week in North Dakota, American Indian. Uh, in Boston at the time, there was also the Boston Braves. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of things named after Indian tribes up in the New England area. Uh, maybe George Preston Marshall was also trying to capitalize on the fact that there was a Major League Baseball team called the Braves, although I think they were at that time referred to as the Bees yeah. at, at that time. I, I'm not really sure of the history. I mean, I'm relying on what Shelley told me. And by the way, Shelley's uncle also played for the Braves. Um, but the team went to Washington and became the Washington Redskins, and there was even a fight song, the Hail mm -hmm. to the Redskins. Uh, and there's a story behind that, which I'm not going to get into, how George Preston Marshall almost lost that song because of the Dallas Cowboys, Cowboys mm -hmm. and Indians there. But th I think I've talked to you about that on another show. Yeah. Uh, there's been... Over the years, people have objected to the name and and the Redskins' ownership, whether it was George Preston Marshall's people, and they got the trademark in 1967, or Jack Kent Cooke, or Edward Bennett Williams, who was part of that at, that, at one point, or um, the uh, Snyder family, or Dan Snyder and his associates, including Fred Smith, who owns FedEx, who says he seems to be okay with the, the name. There have been some, some people who wanted to get rid of the name, but, you know, I know this about the NFL. Cash on the barrel head. If it makes money for us, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Which uh, they can still keep on calling themselves the Redskins and selling the shirts and the banners and the like. Just they can't, they can't stop now. Uh, 
those uh, individuals who may show up in their uh, the FedEx parking lot to sell uh, um, dead skin uh, T-shirts. Uh, so my question now is, wouldn't it be better to simply try and come up with a different name and uh, and sell something and and try and seek uh, trademark protection? It probably would. But Dan Snyder grew up in Maryland, uh, in the Washington suburb, as a Redskin fan. He has said he'll never change the name. He's backed off on it. They probably have about five or six or seven different names ready to go with uniform designs. Although you wouldn't have to change the uniform because you know, burgundy, their colors of burgundy and gold are burgundy and gold. You could do a lot of things with burgundy and gold. Um, I don't know. Um, they can't get the Washington Generals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's one that they're not going to get because I doubt the Harlem Globetrotters are going to give that up. Uh, the USFL had the Washington Federals. Um, there is somebody who owns the trademark to all the USFL teams, so I guess they can't get the Washington Federals. Uh, they're not going to get the Washington Senators because when Major League Baseball went back to Washington, <laughs> the people locally said, we have no senators here. We have no representation. Nobody in the House, nobody in the Senate. Please do not call us the Washington Senators. And that's one thing that Bud Selig and his people got right. And they also had that other name, the Washington Nationals, anyway around. Um, somebody said, uh, Jeff Grimshaw used to work for the uh, for Ted Turner, suggested the Washington Potomacs mm -hmm. um, honor the local tribe, the Potomacs, and get their blessing. Um, you know, Let's face it, whoever is, whatever the name is in Washington, they're going to sell out the field. They're going to sell out advertising locally. In fact, there are people on advertising waiting lists to sponsor, you know, whether it's an official car, official hair gel, although I don't think you and I have to worry <laughs> I about, about that. that. <laughs> um, I, I don't think that, um, I don't think, let's put it this way, they're not going to hold any any dinners for Dan Snyder if he gets rid of that name because he's not gonna lose money um, he'll be able to make money on the new name probably more than the old name because people in that area are gonna go and buy all kind of merchandise with that uh, whatever whatever the new name is remember that's that is not only the district's team that's Virginia's team mm -hmm. uh, and they of course share an area with the Baltimore Ravens but uh, over the years as I've gone back and forth between Washington and New York and I've gone during the football season I could tell you that in Washington in the district and outside of the district that is a religion mm -hmm. that is a beloved team far more so dare I say this than the Giants or Jets in New York <laughs> um, the Giants and Jets have their it's not it's not a part of life the Giants and Jets the Redskins or the Washington football team whatever they call it it's a part of life in the district. Yeah, yeah I, I can I can attest, uh, Evan. Uh, I, there's no doubt about it. Come Sunday, the District of Columbia is empty because everyone, cops and crooks, are inside watching the game, including politicians. If you're talking <laughs> about crooks, oh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that, did I? <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. I guess I'm a little bit progressive on the idea of a new name, which is you mentioned Potomac's. Uh, I think that name is actually garnered by the Washington Nationals Baseball Club because one of their minor league clubs, the Double A team, I think is known as the Potomac's. But the the name I would seize upon is the Grays. The Homestead Grays played, uh, albeit it was in the Negro Baseball Leagues, but if Snyder was to come out with that, hey, that's that's radical. That's something uh, I think, as you would say, would sell and, and the jerseys and the shirts and the like. NFL we does nothing radical. <laughs> Everything is calculated to the bottom line and how many George Washingtons they get out of it. Okay, well maybe uh, you can help us, Evan, with the Georges. For folks watching, who think that when they buy a jersey, whether it be a, a let's say a New York Jets jersey, guess what, Jet fans? You've just helped the New England Patriots. Can you tell us a little bit about 
Well, properties. I mean, NFL properties started about, I believe, 1963. It was a major. It was a major part of the USFL NFL trial back in 1986. Which you covered. Which I was there, and I saw Donald Trump there, and Donald hasn't changed a bit since then. Lucky Sperm Club member. I got to tell you the story one day. It's a funny story. On or off the air? Uh, On the air. On the air. On the air. When we just tell funny, we'll just do this one day telling funny uh, sports stories. But properties was put together in 1963 where yeah. everybody shared equally which means it's uh, it's against antitrust laws but they've gotten waivers to that um, and everybody shares equally I remember um, Mike uh, Michael Heisley in the uh, NBA he had uh, Gasol uh, on his team and he was selling Memphis Grizzlies jerseys of Pau Gasol uh, in Spain and we we're talking about that one day I said how much money to get it and he said what there were 30 teams in the league so I get one 131st. I said 131st. He said 30 teams dividing it equally and then the home office taking some of it. So he said means nothing to me. It's an extra few bucks, but it's the same as Kobe Bryant's jerseys being sold. I get money from Kobe Bryant's jerseys being sold. So it's the same thing uh, in the National Football League. I do think that the Dallas Cowboys have some other rights like pouring rights which are local and i think there's some other teams that have local and and that 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 local revenue is not shared Mm -hmm. um and dan snyder makes a ton of money off local revenue as does jerry jones in dallas as do the jets as do the giants compared to say the buffalo bills or cincinnati bengals which are smaller markets uh although green bay which is a smaller market, may have the most TV eyeballs watching them every week on percentage basis as opposed to New York. But they share equally in all of that, except for local rights, uh, local radio rights. And by the way, Snyder is not going to get criticized in Washington about the name because he owns the radio stations that the team plays on. (laughs) And he goes out and sells the sponsors. And uh, I don't know about um, the Washington Post now and and the Mm -hmm. name because it's not the Graham family anymore. It's Jeff Bezos, and apparently Bezos and Snyder have some sort of relationship, and they're going to patch up the relationship between the football team and the Washington Post. And then... The other thing that gets me is that you have all these commentators who are complaining about the name in Washington who happen to be season ticket holders. And these people are complaining about the name clamor to get into Dan Snyder's luxury box because that is the place that you want to be seen Mm -hmm. on Sunday in the fall during those eight games that they play at the stadium, which, by the way, is not in Washington, D.C., but in Landover, Maryland. And the other thing is, The Washington mayor is trying to get the team back into the district, maybe at RFK's site, the RFK Stadium site. So apparently the politicians who may have problems with the names want the football team back in the district. You mentioned earlier the NCAA, and we should just touch back on that. No, that, how did I work that in? Touch back <laughs> to the segue. Uh, yeah, yeah. To what the NCAA has informed at schools locally here in New York. St. John's is no longer the Red Band, but the, the, the Red sto- Storm. storm. Yeah. That was, but that would preceded the 2005 edict. That, exactly. that goes back a while ago. Exactly. Um, Basically, the NCAA told 19 schools, um, your nickname might be offensive to some people, your mascots might be offensive to some people, your logos might be offensive to some people, and you got about eight months to clean that up. North Dakota sued. They had a settlement in 2008, and basically the settlement was if you get uh, the two local tribes, one is Spirit Lake, I believe, and I forgot the other one, Standing Something or Other. I have to read my article, yeah. which is in the, the Daily, Daily Beast, Beast. <laughs> which is in the Daily Beast if you want to know the two tribes. Anyway, you have to get the two tribes on board. If they say it's okay to have the Fighting Sioux nickname, then there's no problem. You could go ahead and, and have the Fighting Sioux. Uh, a guy by the name of Brian Bream, B R I E M, designed the the logo for the University of North Dakota and he was from uh, the the Chippewa mm-hmm. tribe in uh, North Dakota which by the way did not have a vote on it and um, he thought the logo was okay um, 
by 2010, North Dakota was not, the University of North Dakota was not getting anywhere with one of the two tribes. One tribe said, it's fine. The other one said, no, 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 you got to get rid of the logo. In 2011, the NCAA said, okay, that's enough. We've given you about two, three years. Um, if you want to have any postseason tournament in Grand Forks, uh, it's not going to happen as long as you have that name. And if the school is participating in postseason play, and of course the University of North Dakota has a powerhouse hockey team. That yeah. is its sport, powerhouse hockey team. Uh, Ranger fans might remember James Patrick. He played up there, and, and a lot of others have played up there. Uh, you cannot use the logo when you're playing. Uh, in 2011, the state's education board said uh, we're getting rid of the nickname. Uh, in 2012, it went before the voters and in a referendum in June, approximately two years ago now, uh, June 2012, and the voters said, um, no, we got to get rid of the nickname. So the team doesn't have a nickname right now. They don't have logos. Um, and they don't have merchandise with any logo on it. Um, vendors were given until December 31st of 2012 to get rid of all of the merchandise, and right now it's just the University of North Dakota. Uh, the parallel here is that they had a name that was deemed offensive. That's probably the only parallel. Mm -hmm. You don't have the NCAA telling Dan Snyder what to do. Mm -hmm. You don't have tribes telling Snyder it's okay or not okay. You don't have the voters, and you're never going to have a vote in the district or in Virginia or in West Virginia or in Maryland say, should we keep this name or should we not keep this name? So there is a slight parallel. There's something to guide us if indeed they want to change the name of the team. Of course, we've already had a Washington team name change. When Yitzhak Rabin was assassinated in Israel, uh, the owner of the team, Abe Poland, who had some sort of relationship with Rabin, decided to drop the bullets and become the Wizards. But the bullets, that was not a traditional Washington name anyway. It was a Baltimore name, the mm -hmm. Baltimore Bullets. And that came.